we need to talk about Kung Fu Panda 4. I'd like to start off with saying that I didn't know what to expect before watching the movie. I'd like to say that, but unfortunately it played out almost exactly as I was expecting it to. It was even worse than 3. And keep in mind, I don't even mind the third movie. Yeah, it's easily the weakest of the original trilogy. Oh my god, there's an original Kung Fu Panda trilogy now. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, the third movie is fine. Not very memorable, but not a bad watch. Poe using the wishy finger hold on himself to drag Kai to the spirit realm still goes incredibly hard. But the point is, you'd think Kung Fu Panda 4 would have been a lot more polished. Heck, this is the second time DreamWorks has made a quadrilogy after the release of Shrek Forever After. And that movie is actually awesome. Shrek the Third shouldn't exist. Even as a kid, I just knew movie bad, movie very bad. Trolls might also get a fourth movie considering how profitable the franchise is and how much everybody's been talking about it, especially friggin' Velvet and Veneer. The songs do go hard though, I'm not gonna deny that. But enough about ogres and trolls, let's talk about Jack Black Panda. Spoiler free, of course. Not that there's anything worth spoiling from this freaking movie. Wow, I'm gonna be harsh today, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna be the dragon warrior anymore? This movie's story is deceptively generic. And that just means you would think there would be something neat in the plot, but nothing ever happens. The most interesting story beat is what was given in the trailer regarding Poe on his way out of being the Dragon Warrior. He served his time in that role, and now he has to choose a successor as he becomes the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace. That's actually a really neat premise for the potential new trilogy. Poe used to be the student, and now he's becoming the teacher but it doesn't play much into the actual movie. They just kind of bring it up every now and then with Poe being unsure of who he is, even though they've already described who he is if he's not the Dragon Warrior in the second movie. You know, when he says, you know, like, I am Poe in the memory scene and it goes really hard. And also the, I'm, I'm your son. son near the end to Mr. Ping. Like, come on, those are like the best parts of the entire trilogy. And I think even in 3, they touched on Poe becoming a teacher to others. So, yeah, it's not even very original and it's not very well constructed of a plot, unfortunately. I'm a little frustrated with this movie. We're not so different, you and I. Characters! Yes, this movie has those. And of course, Poe is still a pretty good one. He's just too lovable. We've loved Poe for like 15 years now. Jeez, 2008 was a long time ago. Jeez. And his entire personality and journey and voice performance by Jack Black makes to make DreamWorks most likable protagonist ever, I'm pretty sure. Who doesn't love Poe? Even at his worst, Poe is still super endearing, especially in this movie where he kind of just does nothing, it feels like. But you still like him. You can never really hate Poe. There's also the fox character from the trailer. You know, the Aquafina one. You know, the scuttlebutt, your butt. No, the gossip, the buzz, the who said, well, who does that? Yeah, the scuttlebutt. Yeah, uh, that fox character. Who I actually can't remember the name of. I think it was Jen? I'm just gonna call her Sisu since that's who she basically is. Sisu, to me, actually started out as a fun new character. Her sleek moves alongside Poe, who's anything but sleek was actually a pretty fun dynamic. She's slippery and sneaky and also a thief. And she helps Poe track down the chameleon. And Poe showing her kindness while she expects some ulterior motives is nice and all. But also we've seen this dynamic a hundred times in other movies done way better. And Sisu's personality gets old really fast. And that's Sisu's main flaw. Everything about her character is something we've seen in other media. Except in this movie, it's all done worse. And Sisu as a character amounts to nothing, ultimately. And that's what this movie feels like at the end of the day. A bunch of mind-numbing nothing. Even the villain is a whole lot of nothing. Which is ironic because she can literally become anything. The chameleon is only established as a threat through word of mouth. But we never actually get to see her do anything evil or even scary, really. An opposing demeanor does not a good villain make, DreamWorks. Chifu is in the movie too. He also does nothing. The Furious Five are actually not in the movie at all. For some reason? No Tigress, no Mantis, no Crane, dude? 
Mr. Ping and Li Shan actually are in this movie. And they even do something, working together to follow Poe because they're just too loving and worried to do otherwise. Mr. Ping coming in for the rescue yet again, being the best character in any of these movies. And Li Shan is pretty fun too. Their side plot was the best thing in this movie, no question. And every time you go back to the main plot, it's like, oh, back to nothing. Tai Lung also makes his return, and I'll just say this, I like the sort of growth he has at the end. It was a feel-good moment in a feel-nothing movie. Big fan. Want to know what the most surprising thing about this movie is? The animation was not amazing. Don't get me wrong, it still looks great. The usual stuff is pretty good. But because nothing happened in this movie, that also means there wasn't much to animate that was anything exciting. There was no spectacle, there was no dynamic shots, nothing felt cinematic at all. It was more like a TV movie given a lot of animation budget, you know what I mean? I think even the main fight takes place in a dark room with no colors, which is a far cry from what the other movies managed to accomplish. I think when the chameleon transformed into other characters, it was kind of cool. There was something off about it too though. It was almost bubbly and like dysmorphic. I don't even know how to describe it. It just, it looked weird. But yeah, not very impressive animation either. Dinner with peas in a sesame soy glaze. This is not working at all. Kung Fu Panda 4 is, um, a mess. And while I initially left the theater thinking it was alright, the more time passes, the more problems from the movie come to light. This is not a strong or even fine start to the potential new trilogy. And thus, my grade for Kung Fu Panda 4 is a disappointing C-. It wasn't terrible, but nowhere near acceptable either. If there's anything you should take away from this review, it's to go watch Orion and the Dark. That is easily the best and most charming DreamWorks movie this year so far. And it's really fun, it's got nice characters, a really cute story and friendship. It's actually a pretty good movie. I mean, I don't know why they put it on Netflix instead of in theaters, considering they put friggin' Kung Fu Panda 4 in theaters, but that's neither here nor there. With all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this quick review. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and have a good day everyone.